What is up fellow Kryptonians? Welcome back to a Superman and Lois recap review and breakdown. Sorry if I'm a bit red-eyed right now, but it's uh, I was quite, you know, let's just say there's a certain scene in this episode that made me teary, but yeah, episode 9, man, like, I really enjoyed this episode. Like, there were so many good moments in it. And I don't know, um, I've been enjoying season two every week, don't get me wrong, but there was something about this episode that I felt like, man, I, I feel like I enjoyed this episode a lot more even than the past few ones. And it's that much more of a shame for me, understandably due to pandemic reasons, as uh, Elizabeth Tullock has said on Twitter. Unfortunately, just in case you didn't know already, there is now a three week break until the next episode. So they're going on hiatus for another three weeks. I might do a cool little discussion series video in between, just, uh, you know, for some in-between filler content for us to all nerd out about with Superman and Lois Season 2. So keep an eye out for that. But yeah, let, let's just dive right into this. Other than that, hit the like button. I'd really appreciate that. It takes two seconds of your time. And if you're watching week to week, maybe subscribe if you're not already subscribed because I'm sure you won't enjoy the future content on this channel. So right at the beginning, everyone, this is what I would say is just probably the weakest part of the episode. And I only mean that in a very critical thinking perspective. If I'm taking into account the whole episode, this is the only part I have a little bit of an issue with. I know they did it to facilitate the story to kind of just get on with it. But here we had uh, Ali at the DOD and we had that soldier come through, which I'm glad they actually gave us a soldier who was clearly like the reason was that she was an Anderson loyalist. And yeah, it's just a believable reason because there were quite a few soldiers and it explains, I suppose, that there were quite a few soldiers putting up with this Lieutenant General because I believe that his actions were quite above and beyond at times. And it did make you think, well, nobody else is questioning him. Well, it turns out he had a few soldiers like this one who were willing to really, you know, obey him and now go to the point of, uh, I don't know, committing a crime to save his life. Either way, my issue is, if we just cut to it, very convenient that they just kind of skip past from here to the portal. The big reason for that, you may not care about this, but in a writing perspective, it was very convenient for the fact that they just bypassed her leaving the DOD. Why is that? You may be thinking, some of you, and that is because you could argue there might be a few checkpoints along the way where someone might be like, hey, aren't you supposed to be locked up kind of thing? And they didn't show that, but so those creases wouldn't be in the story. They just wanted to kind of get right to it. You, you get what I'm trying to say. So as a result, that's one of the few moments in this episode is a bit like, eh, on, because sometimes movies, TV shows do this, skip things, characters end up somewhere, and you just don't see the in-between, and obviously that's not a good excuse to just cut between it. Do, do you know what I mean? Again, not everyone cares about that stuff, but when this is a review, I try and take everything into account and remove my bias for my love of this show. And up next, um, we have Superman react to this. Like, clearly, he obviously hears about Ali is going through the portal. She's got an updated suit now so she can survive the journey. And this is my second and probably only issue, one of my only issues, the other issues I might mention throughout this review are extremely minor. I felt like, I don't know if it's, un I, I don't know if I want to use the word uncharacteristic and again I know this was done to kind of just like the alley thing move along the plot because they had everything else in the episode to tackle not that that's really an excuse but in this moment Superman was like I'll bring her back and the soldier was like not even you can make it through not in that and he does this really cool like uh you know spinny spinny spin thing that looks really really awesome I was really into this moment I love this kind of stuff and VFX on screen and Superman and Lois I think they do a really good job at it my only thing is is that for all intents and purposes clark aka superman and you know general lane or whoever don't really know everything there is to know about this portal so clark just made a split second decision to sacrifice himself to go into that portal now we know he's alive obviously it's just i argue that in other episodes of the show thus far they might have taken a step back and i know there might be some commenters out there looking at it like hey boba like he went in he made a decision because he needed to get ali back but i still argue in prior episodes they have kind of like taken one step back looked at the situation how can we go in there he knows that the bizarro superman traveled through that portal with a freaking doomsday looking ali-esque suit that she was in so like i don't get why he just made the assumption or at least the risk to never see his family again by going 
going through it. And yes, he survived, even though it showed his arms or like at least the front sleeves of his suit disintegrating. Just going into the portal, it felt like a bit of a in real life episode writing thing. It's like, okay, let's just put him in there. But realistically, they would have at least analyzed a way to go in. Maybe they would have taken a step back, equipped him with a similar suit. Then Superman would go in to try and retrieve Ali. I know the reason behind it is to get Ali because she could achieve godhood. So that is what I'm guessing quite a few fans will use as the excuse. Don't get me wrong. I know what they were going for. I just argue that it's a decision that if you don't know if you would survive it. And with the context of knowing Bizarro came through with a suit. It, it, it just seems a bit hard to believe for me that Clark would just go through not knowing if he would live or die. I think he would fly back get at least some kind of analysis, rough analysis on it, and then make a calculated risk. I do believe Superman in certain scenarios would make a decision to do something sometimes if it meant the imminent explosion of planet Earth. Like, I'm sorry, Lois, I have to do it. And then he just goes in, right? Like, Man of Steel flying into the uh, terraformer kind of situation where he flew up through the beam. Like, that kind of drastic thing, right? But here... I don't know, like, you know, I get if Ali goes to the other side, she could equip the amulets, but I just feel like it's not necessarily the exact same thing as, you know, have to make a split-second decision. Uh, the whole universe is about to explode, so I have to sacrifice myself. So the fact that he did it, just going through the portal in this moment, I feel like he could have made some step back before he went in. But they just did it because we needed to rush along the plot kind of thing. But from here on out, as Anakin Skywalker says, this is where the fun begins. But not that I didn't enjoy that intro, by the way. Now we have a little bit of a montage. This was awesome. Like, we get a bit of like a kind of like an actual steel Superman moment for John, John Henry Irons. Because he's filling in the role of Superman on the news. It's like, is this our new man of steel? Like, his suit is so powerful that he can actually even hold a plane you know, up in the air like Superman does from going into a city. So th these montages were awesome. Initially, the world is like, where did our caped hero go or whatever over the past week? These disasters keep happening. But then a week turns into a couple of weeks. We see other bits and pieces going on up until where it's been a month. And, you know, you can see that Lois is really trying to grin and bear that, so to speak. And this is something I always really get engrossed with with the characters. And it is obviously aided by the excellent performances of people like Elizabeth. Of Tullock. It really does just suck you into the scene where you can see her struggling yet trying to put a strong face on for the boys. She's been in similar situations where Superman has been gone before, but you just have to trust that he will be okay. Otherwise, at the end of the day, Lois wouldn't be with a man like Clark Kent or Superman if she couldn't deal with some kind of risk assessment thing with him maybe never coming back. But I think with the fact that it's got to a month, it's a little bit like, okay, so what is really going on though? That takes a month. And I'm kind of wondering that as well, because I know we get a little bit of a clue at the end of the episode, but yeah, a month, man, that's a, that's a long time. But man, this episode really pushes other things with Superman's absence, not only like basically a, a John Henry Ein Superman-esque moment from the comics, but also Superboy. Uh, oh, this is why I really enjoyed this episode. Around about this time in the episode, we have Lana preparing for... You know, today is the day where they find out about the votes and who wins as mayor. Uh, we have Jonathan being called out by uh, someone's mum, basically saying, you should be ashamed of yourself. And, you know, I get where they're coming from at the end of the day. Like, you know, her son's a senior and that was the last time he could play in those football games. And like Jonathan, even though it wasn't him, but to everyone else, it was him. We also have some Sarah and Jordan drama. I mean, it, this it didn't get so dramatic at the beginning. But she was even stating that, is everything okay ever since, you know, I've been talking to Aubrey a little bit more, you, you've seemed more distant. Really, this is just the whole distraction thing. As I've said in recent episode reviews, it's clearly that kind of play on the Smallville, Tom Welling Clark, you know, wanting to be in romantic in those moments or be there, have friendships, romantic relationships, whatever. But then he has to go away and there's the person who doesn't know the secret. But he has to lie about it and he can't quite divulge the real truth. But to them, at some point, like it does later on in the episode, it ju it's just like, well, why can't I know? What is really going on here? So, you know, I, I really do like those vibes. I, I feel like... I've really been enjoying Jordan's Superboy journey a lot more than what I thought. And that's not in a bad way, by the way, because I've been saying that I've been enjoying Jordan all along. Especially as things picked up very quickly in Season 1 with the, with the boys. But now, I always knew Superboy was coming, but I didn't actually think the momentum would be rolling this fast in Season 2. They were, like, teasing it in Season 1, obviously. Like, as he was getting his powers more and more. But now things are, like, going really, really, like, full on. And, and it's... They're doing it really well. In between us as well, we have Nat kind of spot her dad having a little bit of, you know, good chemistry with Lana. And this is really rubbing her the wrong way. Because this is the day 
that her Lois, her mother, if you will, died. Now, it did come across a little bit irritating, but at the same time, I felt like it was realistic. Natalie isn't like a bad person. At the end of the day, teenagers aren't always the most rational. Neither are, are adults, obviously. So when she sees on the day that her mother did die and she comes out with these comments that make you think, be quiet, Natalie. Like, I, I'm pretty sure he's not forgetting about your mom. Like, or he hasn't forgot about your mom in general. And he can move on. You're still gonna feel a certain way. I feel like... Whether people found Natalie annoying this episode, because I can already predict that some people might comment that, I do feel like the story they're giving her is something that maybe you or I would feel like if we were like 15, 16, however old they are, you know, if we saw our mum and dad doing that on the day. I know it, at the same time you could say, no, I wouldn't. And maybe you wouldn't, but it is something very human. And I still like appreciate how they do explore that. Either way, in this moment, we got our first Superboy moment, which was awesome. So Kyle is putting out that crazy fire. And then we have Jordan picking up Kyle. And he just has to do this quick thinking on the spot. I've always praised Superman's ability that, yeah, fair enough, he's Superman. But he always has to think of these insane ways to use his powers in the matter of seconds to save lives or a certain environmental factor from getting that much worse. Now, granted, Jordan Edge had to punch through a wall, so the blast didn't, you know, go on Kyle. But it was still cool. It's the beginnings. It's the origins of it. And I argue that this is, as I said, going at a quicker pace than what I thought. Not that it's going too fast. I really feel like this was great. That The cinematography, like the shot of him bursting through, it was really well done. And he is still doing things like using his freeze breath. And I feel like he was more quick on his feet later on in the episode with saving General Lane and Lois. Um, but yeah, this was just the beginning of that and I really, 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 you know, you can tell it from my energy. I was really loving this. But the thing is, John Henry Irons arrived a bit late, so to be fair, like, arguably Kyle would have maybe got killed. Uh, from that little freaking inferno fire thing um if jordan wasn't there and this turns into a whole thing because you think okay yeah he's gonna tell lois we also have carl being roughed up obviously looking a bit rough uh, after being a month or so separated from lana now and we have in this episode sarah obviously picking up on us a little bit which is kind of nice because she's somewhat being there for her dad because she can really tell that he's not doing so great we have a bit of back and forth with sarah going back to lana back to kyle back to lana kind of thing with her asking if you know kyle can stay back with them because he, you know not only is he not doing so well he's also bleeding he's a bit busted up from that event but lana doesn't want to send the wrong message it really does feel like she's moving on i really do feel like they might be putting that quite forward to us when really she is just going to get back with him eventually even with maybe some misdirects of john henry irons i could be wrong there by the way and i, I don't fully subscribe to the idea uh, she could generally be moving on but I don't know, I still am not fully convinced yet, even though it does very much so seem like he can take care of himself, he needs, you know, actions have consequences. It, it just does feel like it's over to Sarah in this moment. We also have Kyle basically saying uh, to Sarah that that boy needs reminding that he's been, that he's lucky to be dating my daughter, you deserve better, and I was like, yeah. but at the same time, to be fair to Sarah, when you do have a boyfriend dipping out all the time, you would at the end of the day at this point, this is fair enough. Like she probably feels like, why aren't you telling me why you're going? And what is it that's so important that you keep going away? Again, the Smallville routine with Clark, but now on the younger Jordan. And after what happened at the end of the episode, I feel like maybe she is gonna maybe move on with Aubrey, but I wouldn't be surprised if when she finds out about Jordan that she still might not be with him. She might be with someone else. Maybe it is Aubrey and she'll be like, oh, so that's why you can never be there you know back then and it'll be that kind of heart-wrenching thing where sarah's kind of with someone else but really now she knows the truth but she can't exactly leave that person to go back with jordan because things have moved on it might be that kind of tropey thing but we're gonna have to wait and see there everyone's feeling a bit of the weight about you know clark being gone at the moment lois is trying to keep a strong face we have jordan trying to step up and be the man of the house or should i say the kryptonian of the house to try and protect everyone and then we have jonathan feeling guilty like he never moved past things with dad and now he's been gone for a month and he doesn't know if he ever will so i like how this episode gave everyone their own way of dealing with the repercussions of clark being gone for a whole ass month now then we have lois take natalie home and she has quite a bit of a go at her dad and then john henry irons puts it together it's like well yeah today is the day and i totally kind of forgot about it everything he was saying was true it's just again with the realistic scenario to her it does look a certain way if he, it did somewhat slip his mind but when he was looking at that that video of baby natalie with his lois that was just heart-wrenching i felt like john henry irons that was great acting but like i wept as well and i haven't been like that in a little while now like i do cry at tv shows don't get me wrong but i feel like i haven't been 
upset like that in a while. I don't know. It feels like it's been a good few months or something. But that scene got me. But then we have John Henry Irons saying to Lois, yeah, there's something I need to tell you. And then I love how it cuts to the next scene. That was very well done. Where it's like, Mom, I have to tell you something. And she's just like, it's too late. I already know. This scene was brilliant. And I like how Jordan was kind of stand. I mean, at I see both perspectives. This is what I feel like the show does very well. We have Lois's concerns about her son. Despite him being a Kryptonian, you know, you're still a mom. You're still going to worry about rushing into a burning fire. Overall, I thought this was just a great scene. And I was like, oh, when he said at the end, I don't need your permission. It was like, when you're under my roof, you do it. And he was just like, not when I'm the one with superpowers. And I was like, damn, you just, yeah, do you... You, you stood up to Lois Lane, and, and we always joke a bit about Lois's temper here. But at the same time, like, it is one of Lois's lessons this episode. I don't know if you want to call it a lesson, but more of an acceptance thing. Is that they are growing up. Like, yes, they're still teenagers, but especially Jordan... Um, he is he is really getting to the point of where you can't always, you know, smother him, so to speak. I, even at the same time, I don't think what Lois is doing is technically smothering. It's just being concerned for a kid who has superpowers, but could maybe get overconfident and maybe get himself killed if he thinks he could do everything his dad does. In this scene as well, the training was revealed and we have that conversation between Lois and her father talking about the training. And I feel like General Lane is just spot on again. It just goes back to what we were just discussing about Lois and her kind of struggle to accept all of this, understandably. They figure out that this place that caught on fire must have been a hub for XK and some bigger operation must have been going on. And this is where they decide to tackle Jonathan about it. Like, who is he protecting again? And I was thinking, okay, he's just not going to give it up. But this time, you know, General Lane could offer immunity, which was... I thought this was a good out, because at the end of the day, if Jonathan thinks, oh wait, yeah, she could be completely, you know, free of any charges, then maybe, maybe I can help out, especially with, this is, as they said, it is getting a bit bigger now, it's not just like some XK running around the school, this is a bigger operation within Smallville that, as they conclude later on, this is bigger than Smallville with the money that was going into that whole thing, like, this could be a really, 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 really big thing, um, so this could be very helpful with what Candace came forward and told them about. She more or less gives the pickup location and this is where, you know, they could either get satellites on it or maybe Jordan. And I felt like it was very predictable what was going to happen from here on out. And to just pause that for a second, I'm very glad that they haven't given Jordan all of these powers yet. Like he's got a lot of them, but he couldn't see exactly what was going on inside before they send the team in because it'd be a big waste of time. They just send the team in when there's nothing there. But because of that hissing, obviously the super hearing wasn't like spot on and he doesn't have his x-ray vision. I'm so glad that maybe this has been a big part of the long arc plan. But they probably thought about not giving everything to him at once or in the first season. So not everything like this would be convenient. So Lois and General Lane decide to go in themselves. Again, very obvious what was going to happen. They get caught. And oh man, I really, even though you knew the character was going to be fine. I think it's a testament to the acting when you know you're engrossed in a scene still. Even though you know General Lane and Lois are going to be fine. Because when that guy was going along putting the silencer on the pistol, it was, it was going to be a very quick job. He was doing that and then it, you know, it was one of those things where he doesn't just hold it there. And I'm so glad they didn't do that, by the way. Because there's too many TV shows that hold the gun there and then somebody comes in. This guy, the way they filmed it was a lot more, it's that it makes it that much more tense when you go like that. And just as you're about to shoot, bang. Like, you know, that's when it's avoided through Jordan's heat vision. Great scene, and this is when the powers unfolded. And once again, I think I applaud them for the thought that went into the scene, because they went, like, a bit back and forth with it. As, uh, immediately, he owned the guy, Freeze Breath punched him, but then they took it back with, oh crap, I've got heat vision coming at me, so, you know, instinctually, he kind of went like that. But then he's that fast with some flash level power. You know, this is some serious speed here. He was just looking at it, and I love the choice to cut out the audio. Absolutely freaking spectacular. Like, he's that fast, he could just watch the heat vision go past. And it wasn't even like, you know, typical watching something going fast. It was so slow. That shows how fast he is. He completely owned the guy again. And again, it, it, other shows might have just had someone come in, smack. Oh yeah, save the day, mom. Uh, but this, they, they put a bit of thought into it. So that's something I just really am happy with. It just shows you that Superman and Lois do go to extra margin or two to put that effort in to scenes that they tackle compared to that of, you know, the, the recent Arrowverse shows that we've had or the ones across the years. Again, I'm not saying they're crap. 
even though I don't like a lot of them. You know what I mean? Superman and Lois does really step up the mark in a lot of areas, and it's always noticeable. And you know one of the most satisfying things as well is that Jordan here, he really does suit it. Like, it's not like a cheesy thing, like when they put the camera in and you don't know if, like, the actor is, like, uh, you know, maybe they're smoldering too much. He really, it just feels natural. Like, what I just saw there, I was like, hey, yeah, good on you, Jordan. You, you did really well. It didn't feel cheesy. Like, that's one of the most important things, I think, when you do a moment like this or you're giving an arc, a Superboy arc to Superboy, if you will. You need, you need it to work visually and in the actor as well. And I have to say, like, I was sold on this. I really, really was. There wasn't too much or anything I can really complain about. So other than that, in other news, we had the mayor votes come in and Lana is the new mayor. Again, I think this is going to lead for quite a robust storyline uh, for the Cushings moving forward. Maybe this will get a lot more people interested. Just, you know, from me scanning the comments, some people always like, you know, I don't care about the Cushing storyline. But now Lana's going to have a bit of stuff left, right and center to deal with. Then we had Jordan catch up to Sarah. We kind of briefly spoke about this earlier, but she breaks up with him i felt really bad for jordan but again i think it's just one of those things he's gonna have to deal with where you know it's like if you can't tell your secret then you know and i feel like there could be a good conversation between clark and jordan coming up about that because maybe he had the similar situation with lana in this version as well before you know uh what happened with lois happened so you know i do expect you know i think jordan loves his powers now don't get me wrong but again it's another part of his heritage or who he is that is preventing him from being happy in life and that was leaned into quite a lot in season one with his mental health he always felt like he didn't fit in and now he can't have the one thing he wants most of all especially with his mindset i remember like there were comments saying no dad like, i want to marry her you know things like that like he's that fully fledged about her now he has to just deal with it for the sake of what clark and his well just overall his parents have instilled in him that you can't tell that secret but i do feel like it could be around the corner because we can't forget that clark did say well if in a year's time or whatever you know, we'll talk about it again. So I know it hasn't been a year yet, but I wonder what could be around the bend there. Now, next, I wish I could say that when Candace and Jonathan were walking, what happened with Jonathan was his powers coming in or something like that. But I don't think so. He started getting that like, head whammying thing. At face value, I was like, oh, but then we saw the Jonathan, uh, the, uh, the inverse Jonathan, after that, come to the Kent farm, and you have to think, you know, when Bizarro arrived, Clark had all these, like, you know, sizzling headaches because Bizarro was here, and it was just mind-screwing with them. You have to think it's because the inverse Jonathan's here, and it gave a little bit of a headache to him in that moment as well. It's like they keep teasing us. I think they knew exactly what most of us were hoping for when we heard that, but it's like, oh, yeah. Yeah, this is just what happened to Clark very earlier on. I really appreciate that comment. Again, they just, uh, I don't know. I, I just love this episode. I, I, I really do. Of Lois just saying, you know, I re I'm really proud of the hero that you're becoming. So Lois is, you know, that's kind of a, not only acknowledging it, but low key endorsing it. So I feel like, oh man, I just feel like there's such potential in the future for Superboy things now. I mean, that was always the case, but I can really feel like it's tangible now more than ever. And then I guess, you know, just as we were talking about a second ago, Leather Jacket Jonathan is what I'm going to call him. <laughs> I don't know why he's wearing a leather jacket, but it kind of has a ring to it. Leather Jacket Jonathan arrives after they say, where's Clark? He says he was too late. And we see Clark in the inverse world looking at some kind of glowy, glowy thing going on in the background. So that's probably why Clark has been there for a full month. And I'm guessing maybe what he was looking at, the glowy, glowy thing, was already the, the merging or the godhood thing if you merge. Whether that was Ali, whether that was Anderson, because he had both amulets. Like, I think they want us to think it's Ali, but at the same time, we can't forget that Anderson's the one who went in there. And I am thinking that Anderson, as I've been speculating all season long, is going to go mega super serum, which he kind of already did with the XK US agent Marvel style. But like, you know, you know, Dragon Ball Z godhood style with um, whatever Clark was witnessing there. And that could lead up to that boss battle. As for the promo for next episode, it feels like really weird Adam's family stuff going on. I mean, I feel like it's really going to grip me because we're going to see the tragedy of the Bizarro Clark Superman and how he lost his family like you're seeing on screen right now. They, they were a proper, proper family. But like, it feels like everyone's got that emo goth look to them. The memes and jokes aside, it's gonna be sad because he did look like a normal Clark on that Earth before he started taking Kryptonite or whatever he was abusing because on that Earth it wasn't really XK. I think it was Kryptonite that he was taking in those inhalers. I'm not really mega sure there, but it's gonna be a tale of flashbacks, I think. Not net, maybe the entire episode, we, we don't know for sure yet, or at least I don't. Um, but yeah, looking forward to that, but it's gonna be in three 
week's time. So other than that, guys, this episode was fantastic in my opinion. I thoroughly enjoyed it. Probably one of my favorite of the season so far. Let me know your thoughts down in the comments below. Any theories? But if you enjoyed this video, just leave a thumbs up on it. If you haven't done so already, uh, just asking you again, maybe reminding you to do that because it does help out a lot. Maybe subscribe if you're still finding yourself not subscribed to the channel. Follow me on Twitter, follow me on Instagram, and I do have a Discord server if you want to talk about this with me and others in the Talks community. Again, as always, links are in the description, but thank you so much for watching. I hope you all have a lovely rest of your day, and I'll see you fellow Kryptonians in the next video. Goodbye.